bitter to my Ophelis. Curse those humans, they're attacking the royal mines again. Knights of the square table, defend our family jewels! We must defeat Sir George's men. Gasflame, establish a defense perimeter. Bernevere, report on troop strength. Blaze, you and I will attack in formation Delta Tango Orange. Or better yet, let's just rush in and torch those buggers. All Camel Hawk! <laughs> The raid wasn't a complete loss, Sir George. We did lose a thousand knights, but at least we made off with this extraordinary diamond. It's half eaten! Curse those dragons! Merrin, I want some fiendish advice. How can I make Camelhot mine? Hmm. My spies have just given me some new, deliciously diabolical information regarding the future of Camelot. My new alarming clock is a splendid invention, but adding the snooze level was pure genius. Flicker, hurry up, you lazy bag of dragon droppings. King Olfar's been waiting to see you. I just want to test the snooze level one more time. I'll be down in nine minutes. Fine. I'll tell the king, our absolute sovereign, master of all he surveys, that you can't fit him into your busy schedule. Whoa, hold your jingle bells. Tell the king I'm on my way. Maybe it's about my request to battle in the tournament tomorrow. If I can't win, Princess Flame will be forced to marry someone else. It's a photo of Princess Flame. She's the apple of my eye, the cream in my coffee, the frosting on my cupcake. Strange, whenever I think of Flame I get very hungry. My hero. Necessity may be the mother of invention, but Albert is definitely the father of invention. They're such a nice couple. I wonder why they never had kids. The only drawback to my alarming clock is that I have to wake up and wind it every ten minutes. I do some of my best work here, so I sleep as much as possible. My rubberized tail warmer. Functional yet stylish. It keeps my tail toasty at night. Bad idea. When I nap during the day, I tend to draw lighter fluid. I have a cracking good view of Camel Hot from my window. Flame calls it my junk pile. But one dragon's junk is another dragon's treasure. A great inventor needs a great workbench. Unfortunately, I'm stuck with this one. It's my pet moth, Pavlov. So far, I've conditioned him to stay in his jar even after the lid is removed. Hello, Pavlov. Hello, little friend. Anxious to show all the nice people what a well-trained moth you are? Pavlov, where are you going? You're setting a terrible example at the beginning of the game. 
Bad moth, bad. My favourite nightshirt. It's a wool asbestos blend. That's only for sleeping and it's nowhere near bedtime yet. This is the most precious thing I own. My invention book. It contains the designs for all my best inventions. A good inventor always has his invention book. These are all the textbooks from my famous inventor's home study course. This candelabra has lit my way to the kitchen for many late night snacks. That door leads to the Camel Hot Library. They've got books on every subject from A to Y. Apparently some dragons sneezed and burnt down the Z's. Flicker, about tomorrow's tournament, my answer is no! Jeez, I was only an hour late. The tournament is open only to dragon knights. You're not a knight, you're not even a squire. Knights of the square table, your attention please. Silence please, silence for the king. Pray silence, the king is speaking. Uh... Shh, I'm sorry. We must do something, Flicker. I refuse to marry one of these flaming idiots. I'll try, Flame. I promise. Uh oh, visitors! Humans, Humans in Camel Hot? Greetings, King Smallfire. <laughs> oh, I sincerely regret to hear that you are finally retiring. When my entry in your tournament, the Black Dragon wins and is crowned king, he will turn your hide into ladies' handbags and tight shoes. What? Humans can't enter the tournament? I'm certain the Camelhot Law Book will not allow such a thing, Chancellor! Hmm. You're undoubtedly right, sire. Chapter 3, Section 9, Paragraph 18 clearly states that Humans shall not be eligible to participate in any tournament. Unless, of course, they have a dragon to participate on their behalf. Chancellor, I believe you're mistaken. Doesn't Chapter 3, Section 9, Paragraph 18 refer to an obscure law governing public snout picking? Uh, yes, well, at one time it did, but uh, I changed it. Accidentally. Uh, this is a sensitive matter of state, King Allfire. I really don't think the princess should be involved. Quite right. Keep quiet, dearest. Quibble while you may. Tomorrow, Camel Hut will be mine. Away, Mervyn! Humans! Ha! We should have toasted the little pink bugs the moment they arrived. Calm down! Our opponent can be defeated. Your mission is to bring back information about this mysterious black dragon. Yes, yes sire! sire! Father, Flicker needs a mission. Oh, okay. Flicker, I hereby command you to wash all the dirty dishes that have piled up in the royal kitchen. There you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wacko! Tell you who, chaps, we have a black dragon to quash! That's an English word, you know. Oh, blind idiot! Oh, great. I see Sir Gasflame's been using room service again. That's a waste of time. Those are in the foreground. The royal tea kettles are always left on the stove in case the king wants a cup of tea to soothe his nerves. 
salad tongs? These must be really old. Dragons haven't eaten salad in thousands of years. King Allfire's teacups are on a handy spinning rack. I bet this mop keeps the kitchen floor clean enough to eat off. We should use it on the tables. At least someone started soaking the gem-crusted dishes. Nothing's tougher than diamond stains. It's not that I object to manual labour. I just prefer to use my brain to avoid it. This is one of my favourite inventions. Everyone needs help scrubbing those hard-to-reach scales. A diverter combines the steam to a central source. A rubber hose carries the steam to the receptor rack. The jet of steam catches in the cups and spins the receptor rack. The scrubber spins with enough force to clean just about anything, including grimy tail scales. I have nothing to say to that. I could most likely use this in case I make a mess. Or perhaps for something else. This is a step in the right direction, but it would be better if something else were moving the mop around. It fits like it was made to go there. Now, if only I could get this thing to spin. Flicker, I've got great news. You're going to help me with the dishes? No. If you're a knight, Daddy will have to let you compete in a tournament. To become a knight, you first need to have an existing knight take you on as a squire. And then? As a squire, you can journey into the Cave of Dilemma. Leave alive and you're a knight. Good luck! Bye! Well, that sure simplified things. Without candles in it, the tube-like hollow design could be used for other things. It's a perfect fit. So snug that no steam's escaping. It's combined the two steam sources into one powerful source. My rubberized tail warmer. Functional yet stylish. It keeps my tail toasty at night. I love it when an invention comes together. Dishpan claws are now a thing of the past. Lo and behold, the automatic dishwasher. Now how much would you pay for this miracle time saver? Don't answer, because I'm free to leave the castle. What's all this then? Good day, Chancellor. This is my latest invention, the automatic dishwasher. I see it's run off steam. Is it powerful? As powerful as a dozen knights. Fascinating. Perhaps later I can help you find some further uses for it. Wise King Allfire. Camelhot owes him a debt it can never repay. The dearly departed Queen Griddle. She departed a few years ago with Sir Loinfire. It's the revered squared table. The revered coffee table is in the other room. I'd better not. He seems deep in thought. Or asleep. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Excuse me, King Allfire. Flicker, leave me. I'm thinking through a strategy for when my knights return. This door goes to Princess Flame's bedroom. Flicker, 
Sir, this is my bedroom. Next time, knock, please. Oh, Flame is really upset about the tournament. Hmm. This mirror is clearly warped. Makes me look like I have a jewel gut. Flame has an outstanding view of... My bedroom? I'll have to put up some blinds. It's Princess Flame's couch. If Princess Flame was willing, I'd make it a love seat. It's a bottle of Hair Club for Dragons. Guaranteed to grow hair on even the most stubborn heads. Excuse me, Flame? Flicker, have you done it? Are you a squire? Uh, I'm close, Flame. Honest. Hurry, Flicker. I refuse to marry against my will. Can't you talk the king out of forcing you to marry? Use your feminine wiles. You know, smile sweetly. Lock him in a half, Nelson. I've tried, but he reversed me into a figure four leg lock. Flame? Flicker? So, uh, what sort of dragon do you want to marry? Well, the dragon of my dreams is sensitive. The other day I saw a rainbow so beautiful, I wept. Of course he'd have to be funny. Did you hear about the human who thought manual labour was a famous Spanish painter? Brave. He'd have to be brave. I'm almost completely over that nightlight phase. I swear. And most important of all, he'd have to be covered in tattoos that say, I belong to flame. Fine, I'll check the docks and get back to you. Touchy. Flame? Flicker? Do you have any more advice about becoming a knight? Nope, but here's a kiss for good luck. <laughs> Could we try that good luck kiss thing again? It's a kiss from Princess Flame. That's the doorway to King Allfire's bedroom. The King and Queen were happily married for nearly a thousand years and unhappily married for more than 4,000 years. King Allfire sat on this chair, as did his father and his father's father. A bit crowded with all three of them, I imagine. Hmm, pipe cleaners. The king must have been cleaning his sinuses out. I don't have sinus problems, but this pipe cleaner might come in handy. I'd rather not. Besides, it's covered with pipe cleaners. I feel bad enough having taken one. Any more and I couldn't live with myself. And if I couldn't live with myself, I'd have to find a roommate. Because there's no way I could afford to pay rent all by myself. From this balcony, King Allfire can admire the majestic landscapes of Camelhot. Which, by the way, are on loan from the Majestic Landscaping Company. It's King Allfire's Fountain. I am honoured that King Allfire has one of my inventions in his bedroom. It's a shame it only tells the correct time twice a day. King Allfire's Bed. It has a queen-size mattress which cost a princely sum. Monarch Quarterly. In this issue, they reprint King Allfire's infamous 12-hour coronation speech. I'll just take the Monarch Quarterly along in case I get a sudden bout of insomnia. Is this a habit of yours? Rolling around on other people's beds, hmm? Never. I hate water.
This leads to the Chancellor's Chambers. He's King Allfire's most trusted aide, although I'm not sure why. King Allfire thought of this information booth after he got lost in a neighbouring castle. I beg your pardon? Yes, what can I do for you? I need your help. I have to locate the Knights of the Square Table. I've got a semi-enchanted map. It will show you where you want to go, even if you don't know you want to go there. I beg your pardon? Yes, what can I do for you? What's the easiest way to become a squire? Kiss some knight's butt flicker. It hurts, but it's worth it. Oh, heavens me, did I just say that? Can I have some useless information? The furthest the golf ball has ever travelled is 307 miles. It was stopped at customs in Prague and jailed as an enemy of the state. What are you knitting? Oh, my little boy's grown another two feet since last week. I just can't keep up. Now, what can I do for you? I need one of those, um, things. You know. You mean one of those diddly bops you put on your, well, you know. Exactly. But without the doohickey on the end. Either you want a new bowstring for your crossbow or I should slap your face. Either way, I can't help you. Can I have some useless information? There are only two things you can be sure of in life, death and taxes. And that there are only two things in life you can be sure of. Wait a minute. Can I have some useless information? The furthest the golf ball has... Can I have some useless information? The record for standing in an active volcano is 37 days Four hours and counting. Of course, the poor fellow died instantly, but still. Can I have some useless information? The most visited spot in all of Camelhot is the King's bathroom. Ever since he went on that liquid ruby diet, the King's been in there five times an hour. I have all the information I need. really is enchanted. I can see where all four knights have gone. How did Sir Bernevere wind up here? This is the home for the grimly insane, where they treat clinically depressed storybook characters. Looks like he wiped out the home for the happily insane next door. A hundred foot beanstalk. Folks here will be eating beans for months. Well, so much for the Clean Air Act. Magic beans! This place is jumping with them. Magic beans. This one looks good. That's either a window or a fiendishly clever door that's a master of disguise. She seems like a very confused young lady. Excuse me, but your hair... It's too long, I know. Otherwise, you never would have said such a thing. Please calm yourself, miss. Yablanowitz! Rapunzel Yablanowitz! And how could I be calm with all this long hair? Oh, what long hair? You don't know what it was like. Everywhere I turned, it was, Rapunzel, throw down your hair! Rapunzel, throw some more hair down! Hey, I didn't get any hair over here! Before long, I was throwing down hair all over the place. It was making me crazy! That's exactly what I was thinking. Crazy. Luckily, Dr. Fraud is a man who knows how to make a commitment. In fact, he's committed everybody here. He's really helped me see the light. Getting the hair out of your eyes probably helped. Should you be outside? Unattended? Yes, of course. I do the gardening around here. I trim the bushes, I trim the grass, I trim everything. You should have seen that beanstalk before I got to it. Why are you so stressed about your hair? My hair? 
If I don't keep it short, it'll grow down to the floor and then out the door. But we're outside. Wouldn't it grow in the door? Well, if you're gonna split hairs... Now, don't bother me. I've got to be ready with my clippers if it tries to grow. Forget I said anything. Most people do. Looks to be about 50 feet of hair. Pretty and sturdy. She's a nervous wreck. I hope she doesn't hurt herself with those clippers. How's it hanging? Stay away! Any more of that tonic and I'll be able to tuck my bangs into my socks! I won't splash you again. You have my word. What I'd really like to have is that hair tonic. How about you hand over the bottle and I'll give you my clippers? Nah, I have the strangest desire to collect a lot of junk lately. Well, okay. So, you think your mother is, um... <laughs> A, a dragon! Oh, good sir, I don't have time for this. Ah, you have a classic case of scale envy. Now, take off that silly costume. Hmm? This isn't a costume. I'm a dragon. <laughs> and you, sir, are a fraud. Yes, I am Dr. Sigmund Ford. Specialist in the disturbed, the confused, and the loony nut boys. What a mess. Sir Burnaby is trapped. It looks like Dr. Fraud is losing his patience. Excuse me, Dr. Fraud? Another one. The madness is spreading. Wait till I finish with the other nutcase. Psst! Sir Bernivere. Do you mind? I am in the middle of a session with my patient. I say, that's a nice pipe. Uh, can't stop to talk. Have to play. <gasps> so the play's the thing. But why? Uh, the rats. My playing is the only thing keeping the rats away. If I stop, they'll be all over me. It's horrible. But I haven't seen a rat for miles. Uh, don't be fooled. They're all around us. They hide in the shadows with the glowing red eyes. Waiting. That's a catchy little ditty. What's it called? Do oh, it's called Keep the Rancid Rats at Bay. If one gets near, I fear my flesh he'll flay. <laughs> it's an original composition. Is that a flute or a recorder? <laughs> it's neither. It's a pipe. I'm the Pied Piper. Get it? I'll talk to you later. I see you're busy being insane. <gasps> Beware the rats! They're out there! Hmm. When you first realized that you were a dragon? When I learned my colors, I noticed I was green. Excuse me? Yes, what can I do for you? I notice you're eating flies. Indeed I am, dear boy. They're low in fat, high in fiber, and the way they buzz on the way down gives them a little added zing. I didn't know humans enjoyed flies. Neither did I. Oh, fancy that. Humans like the same things we frogs do. Oh, so you're a frog? More or less. Aren't you cold? Nudity leads to that. I usually wrap myself in a lily pad when I catch a chill, but that's a little impractical now. If you don't mind me saying so, you look pretty human. For a frog, that is. Hard to miss, isn't it? I blame the princess who kissed me last summer. Eccentric girl. Good family, though. Is there anything I could do to help? If you should come across a princess in an affectionate mood, do send her my way. Puckered up, if possible, and not too much lipstick. There's a good chap. Sorry to bother you. I see you're eating. A naked man eating flies. After what I've seen today, that doesn't seem so strange. 
I order you to release me this instant. <laughs> you order me? Not to self. Also suffers from delusions of grandeur. Thought of yourself as any other mythical creature? That was remarkable. All it took was Princess Flame's kiss to turn you back into your original form. I imagine you'd giggle if you could. And most of your IQ went away when you transformed, didn't it? So I'm probably standing here talking to a frog who doesn't understand a word I say. Ah, curing you will be my life's work. I'm certain he's happy to be a frog again, but he still looks sort of sad and lonely. I am a dragon and a knight. No, you don't have a complex. You have a duplex. Lance, the royal mole, is ruining the streets of Camelhot. The royal subjects love this statue, but the royal pigeons love it more. Lance, the mole, is certainly busy today. Flat and wooden. Perfect traits if you're a pizza paddle. That's the royal pizza chef. He makes a double cheese with rubies that's to die for. But he's not the happiest dragon in town. Excuse me, chef? Oh, solo mio, nothing is free. Oh, my life is so depressing. <laughs> it's an affair and an adjust. Oh, what is the point? It seems like not much. What do you want, a flicker? I'm busy being upset. What's the problem? What isn't? Ah, it's been such a long time since I had a good laugh, you know? Like when you laugh so gosh darn hard you think your heart is gonna explode? Maybe it would help if I told you an amusing anecdote. What's the matter, you? I'm not sick. I don't need no antidote. Well, you need something to put a smile on your face. Excuse me, chef? What do you want, a flicker? I'm busy being upset. Can Trivet cheer you up? Ha! Ah, you crazy? Ha! Ah, that a stupid dragon wouldn't know a joke even if I served it to him like a larger pizza with the extra opals. Well, I know he's not that funny, but... Funny? Ha! He's not even close. He makes me even more depressed than I am. Excuse me, chef? What do you want, a flicker? I'm busy being upset. Don't be so depressed. At least you have a nice paddle. She's a beauty, no? <laughs> it's a one of a kind, irreplaceable. So you wouldn't want to sell it? I just said it's irreplaceable. That means I no cannot replace it. Shit! Hey, what's the matter with you? This paddle and I are very attached to find another. Pizza. That says it all. I don't know any dragon who wouldn't flip for a hot, jewel-encrusted pizza pie. Through that archway is the tournament grounds. With all the soot around here, the royal sign washer has his hands full. Plus he has to work on stilts. Hello up there. How's it going? You say you're from the Union? No, oh, I can't hear you way up here. No, oh, I'm coming down. I'm sorry, but I'm not from the Union. Forget it, kid. It's time for a break anyway. The Sign Washers Union says we get a break every 13 minutes. You need a lot of breaks when you work on stilts, you know. I wouldn't waste my breath. Hands off, son. If I can't climb up and clean this sign, I could lose my job, and I'm only two years away from retiring to a fat pension. 
through that archway is the tournament grounds. It's the Royal Termite Mound. They're too tiny to pick up individually. You can bend a pipe cleaner into a fun shape or stick it into hard to reach places. My pipe cleaner is now covered with nasty termites. It's the Royal Catapult Target Range, where knights practice raining cats, but never dogs, against enemy castles. A crude representation of Sir George's home, Castle Grimm, which is pretty crude itself. It's simple. Use the catapult to knock down the cutouts of Sir George's knights. All I have to do is aim the catapult, adjust the tension and release. If I hit 9 out of 10 wooden knights, I get a shot at the big Sir George cutout for the win. I got it! That's one! Chalk up a second one! Scratch the third one! Four down! Halfway there, that's five! Six, got this by the tail! Seven down, victory is near! That makes eight! Hey, that's nine! Bounced on ten! I did it! I win! I am master of the catapult range! The poor fella took a lot of punishment. I'd better hold on to him. He's a bit of a nervous wreck. It looks like he could snap any minute now. Try this. No, you don't have <laughs> Must keep wooden pipe in perfect condition. I don't know what I'd do without my pipe. <laughs> ah, we're doomed! A total rat attack! Any second now, I'm going to be covered from head to toe with rats. Rats up my shirt, down my pants, in my shoes! Stop that over there! What are you, cuckoo? Cut it out! Strangers on the street will say, What a nice fur coat, what a nice fur coat, and I'll say, I'm not wearing a fur coat! I am covered with rats! Dirty, stinking, lousy rats! Knock it off, you! The only rats around here are inside your head! In my head? Oh my god! Get them out, get them out, get them out now! Settle down! Relax! Relax! Untie me, Flicker! Hurry! Flicker! Oh, good job, lad. I wish there was a way to show my gratitude. And I wish that a grateful knight would make me a squire. If only there was some way both our wishes could come true. I believe indentured servitude to be a degrading anachronism. But so you will not defame my hallowed name, please take this gift as a token of my gratitude. Sir Knight, I don't know what to say, except, what is this? It was awarded to me when I deduced that the world was the shape of a duck. Impressive. Well, well, what have we got here then? Do not bother us! This is an emergency! Oh 
Just look at the time. King Allfire sent me on a mission and I've been here for hours. You're such a bad boy. Hey, big guy. I can't control my burning feelings of candy love. This tranquil pool must be enchanted. Sir Blaze's reflection has a mind of its own. That's Sir Blaze, the seriously vain, mesmerised by the thing he loves the most. She seems like a happy little frog, but I bet she's lonely being here all by herself. I really have to go. So long, you handsome hunk of desire. Me, handsome? You certainly are, Dimple Toes. Excuse me, Sir Blaze? Not now, Mummy. Can't you see I'm busy? <sighs> you heard him, baby. Go chill with the out crowd. You're as handsome as the honey gods of Olympus. Are you recovered from that embarrassing bout of narcissism tonight? Oh yes, Flicker. That was indeed a torturous, <sighs> yet somehow stimulating spell. Thank you for saving me. I'd consider the debt paid in full if you would take me on as your squire. Oh bother. I'd love to, but I couldn't do a thing for you. I'm way over my squire quota. Try one of the other nights, lad. Come on now, no pouty faces. Here's a gift for you. I'm honoured, Sir Knight. This is clearly a family heirloom, handed down through generations. Don't be silly. I have another 30 crates in my boudoir. It's one of Sir Blaze's many mirrors. Down here, wretched human! You come up here, you myopic moron! King Allfire's tomato garden. It contains the most fertile soil in the kingdom. That's Sir Gasflame, the visually impaired. He's a powerful warrior, but his eyes are as weak as his intellect. I haven't seen the king this angry since that nasty business with the pea under the princess's mattress. Trivet can be so literal at times. You come up here! It's rude and crude to yell in public. If I want to speak to the king, I'll walk to the bedroom. Um, pardon me, Sir Gasflame? Huh? My word! A giant talking dandelion! Oh, <laughs> Flicker, it's you! Why do you refuse to wear glasses? Sir Bernevere wears them into battle. Do you think any less of him? Of course I do! But he can use those large words to defend himself. That's King Allfire up there. Your sense of humour is warped. It's clear this is Castle Grimm and that fuzzy blot up there is Sir George. Talk to you later. I see you're busy attacking the wrong castle. I order you to surrender, vile human! I order you to the Royal Optometrist! Perfect. It sank right into the ground. Now if I know my fairy tales, this shouldn't take very long. Unhand my nose, you stone-blind stalker! King Allfire! What happened to Sir George? Am I in trouble? Found you, gas flame. This is the last straw. Oh my word! Look at my poor tomato plants. Looks as though you've got brown roots, sire. Blast it all! I've worked so hard on them. There, there. If you like, I can give you my mum's recipe for fertilizer that will solve all your problems. That's rather stand up of you, gas flame. All is forgiven with that earlier business. So anyway, how's your mum these days? 
married her last week. <laughs> Dead, you know. Oh, just a minute, sire. Flicker lad, thanks for the help. It was my pleasure, Sir Knight. Just as it would be my pleasure to serve under you as your squire. Oh, dash it all. You know me and squires. I'm a special case. But Sir Loungy Lot is looking for a squire. And as a token of my appreciation, here is a lump of Peruvian coal. Gee, thanks. Coal. Off to the square table room, Sir Gasflame. Follow me. Your Highness is most resourceful. Peruvian coal. It's good and good for you. One bite and even I can breathe fire for a short while. Hey, Sir Lancelot's out of the woods. It's been said that Sir Loungelot is the bravest and strongest of the knights. Of course, Sir Loungelot is usually the one who says it. There's the black dragon. Even his silhouette is scary. A pitchfork in the right hands can be an effective tool. I'll take this. Sir Loungelot. I've been looking all over for you. I've been looking all over for the Black Dragon. I challenged the coward hours ago and he still hasn't engaged me in combat. Combat? With him? Surely you jest. No, I joust. I thought the King only wanted you to get information about the Black Dragon. Ha! Huh. King Allfire will forget all about that when I come home dragging the beast by its tail. You expect the Black Dragon to come down here? Why not? It's his turn. After all, I had to trudge all the way up the hill to challenge the brute. It's only fair he should come down to me for the battle. Is there any way I can talk you out of this challenge? No! It's a matter of honour now. Sir Loungelot, about the Black Dragon. This is no time for talking. I'm a dragon of action. And I'll sit here and wait for that dragon as long as I have to. That's much too steep for me to walk up. I should use the path. The Black Dragon is a machine! That makes sense. No self-respecting dragon would ever work for Sir George. It's treadmill powered. It's my guess that once they untie the rope, they'll hop in the treadmill and power that monstrosity up. It seems ready for launch. That's Sir George. I guess he's testing the Black Dragon. We must conduct the test. That's Dog the Dog. Sir George's loyal dog. He's a clever little fellow. Fast asleep. Still not feeling up to scratch. Test them. <laughs> Smash into those redwood trees, coward! Some warrior you are! You slug brain simpletons! This is all your fault! Sir Loungelot, what happened? Did you not see it yourself? First the fiend was not alone, he brought several of his friends! No doubt it's a grand tale, but first I have something to ask you. Very well, what is it? You know I admire you, don't you? I'm not sure I like where this is going, Flicker. If you get funny on me, you'll regret it. I'm looking for a knight to squire under. And you want me to be that knight? Out of the question, you're not qualified. On a mission like this, you wear chain mail? Yes, what of it? Mail is fine if you're conquering a continent, but for tracking down dragons, I would have picked out a light wall. While tracking, you need to be light on your feet. 
You seem to know quite a bit about battlefield wear. I've just now decided that you will be my new squire. If you insist. Tis settled. Now, here's something I think you will need. Soap? Not common soap, simpleton. It's my privately blended laundry detergent for my undergarments, which I expect my squire to scrub every morning. Sir Loungelock, I'm overwhelmed by your generosity. You're very welcome. Now, back to Camel Hot so I can tell the others of my grand battle. King Allfire, the Black Dragon has been defeated. Say what? Good work, Sir Loungelot. You will make a fine king and husband to my lovely flame when you win the... T I mean, <laughs> if you win the tournament tomorrow. <laughs> I am not about to stand here and be given away as a prize in a contest. Blast it all. Flicker, see if you could cool flames flames a bit, would you? Yes, your firm but fair dictatorship, but first I have vital news about the Black Dragon. What could you possibly have to report, my puny squire? That the Black Dragon is actually... a machine! <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, knight, settle down, we shall resume later. Flicker, now please go watch Princess Flame for me. All right, your Purple Mountain's Majesty. I'm running away. But I just became a Squire Flame. If I make knighthood by tomorrow, I can win your hand in the tournament. Sorry, can't chance it. Now, help me find something to lower out the window for me to climb down. Flame is really upset about the tournament. Say, I bet I could tear these sheets and make a rope out of them. Flicker, those sheets are a family heirloom. Tell me you weren't thinking of daring them up to make a rope. Oh no, I was thinking of tearing them up to make a Halloween costume. But never mind, I'll just go as a dragon. Again. This is the bed where Princess Flame's sweet head is laid each and every night. Hair is one of the toughest materials there is. A single strand will hold many times its own weight. Please hurry! I'm sure I'll find an appropriate use for it, but not hair and now. Zippity Duda Ali Ali Oxen Free Form of a Waterfall Knock it off! I tire of waiting for the Chancellor. Where is that scabrous, scaly faced moron? Sir George Mervyn. Moron, moron, more on this subject later. Mervyn, our friend the Chancellor has arrived. Why have you summoned us here, Chancellor? A meeting like this is quite risky for you. Indeed it is. But Sir Loungelot has told the court that he defeated your black dragon. No matter. For Mervyn here is building a bigger, more powerful, new and improved... Black Dragon 2! The sequel! Excellent! A young inventor here in the castle has created an extraordinary power source. With it, your Black Dragon 2 will be unstoppable. A power source, eh? Hmm, what flavor? <laughs> ah! Now wait here by the castle while I go and retrieve the plans. I'll send them down. Right then. In the meantime, I shall prance about and practice my maniacal laughter. <laughs> 
Flicker. I knew I could depend upon you. Ugh! What kind of knot was that? Weren't you ever a dragon scout, Flicker? Uh, afraid not. Hey! What are you doing here? Ugh! Let go of me this instant! Flame! What's happening down there? Help me, Flicker! It's broken door! And he's tying me up and putting me in the back of his carriage! I... Oh, God! Help me, you scoundrel! <laughs> Flame! A flaming note. It says, thanks for princess, was expecting plans. Signed, your pal... Oh, no! What plans could they mean? Flicker! What have you done? Depends how much of that last bit you overheard, Chancellor. Most of it. Now tell me what happened, Flicker. Flame was kidnapped, and a flaming note from the kidnappers said that they were expecting some plans. I don't know what plans they were talking about. Simpletons! It should be obvious, Flicker. The kidnappers want the plans to your dishwasher. My steam engine? Yes. Give me the plans and I'll see that the princess is freed. Not gonna do it. Wouldn't be prudent. Fool! You're wasting valuable time! My bag is missing! It's Flame's suitcase, fully packed. I want to, but I don't have anywhere to put it. The flame from the arrow has burned holes in these. They're practically useless now. Fire finds out about Flame, he'll have me beheaded for sure. Flicker, where is my daughter? I wish to see her. King Allfire? Flicker, where is my daughter? I wish to see her. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Until you bring me Princess Flame, I don't have anything to say to you, Flicker. I beg your pardon? Yes? What can I do for you? King Allfire wants to see Princess Flame. If the Kingy Pooh wants to see a princess, go ahead and show him one. I have all the information I need. You snatched my bag! And that's my invention book! Give it back! Hush, lad. Trust me. You'll thank me for this one day. Now let's get these plans to the kidnappers so our beloved Princess Flame can return to us unharmed. This same day, Carrier Eagle. We'll get the plans there lickety-split. Curse you, stupid bird! Oh well, at least I have my backup ground delivery dodo. <coughs> if you can't trust me, here's your chance to redeem yourself. Follow the dodo to the kidnapper's lair, rescue the princess, and you'll be a hero. As soon as the little fool gets anywhere near Castle Grimm, he'll be chopped into a dozen pieces by Sir George's guards. Did you say something to me, Chancellor? Oh, no, 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 no. I was just having a small, malicious aside. Carry on, lad. It's a book from the Royal Library titled 
crushing the will of the weak with no remorse. This book is way overdue. Let the Chancellor return his own books. This is an old model. It's back from when we thought the world was round. The Chancellor's twisted rotten window. Its motto is, no pain, no gain. Get it? No pain? <laughs> Crack me up! <laughs> they say you can tell a lot about a person from his desk. The Chancellor's desk is crooked and twisted. The Chancellor uses these to designate which bird will carry the mail, Express Eagle or Second Class Dodo. I might be able to use these. What a great concept! Using birds to deliver messages. It certainly beats my plan to use covered wagons powered by fossil fuel burning internal combustion engines. Mmm, salty dick soda crackers. The birds must get thirsty eating these. I'm certain no one will miss a couple of crackers. This chart denotes endangered species, which are protected by law. It's a sad state of affairs when we need laws to protect our animal and insect friends. There's only two of them left, and they're not even speaking. If they don't kiss and make up, the species is almost certainly doomed to extinction. Poor little guys. They're exquisite birds with such excellent taste. Unfortunately, they taste excellent to the hedgehogs. There used to be plenty of them until the minor birds started fighting back. They sent in a mediator, but they ate him. That's Librarian Pure Flame. To say she's a bit deaf is like saying a tree is a bit wooden. I beg your pardon? You want a bigger garden? Look under horticulture in aisle four! No, I said, you're awfully hard of hearing. Oh, you like my earrings? My son sent them to Mayor. He won them in a contest. Can you suggest a book to read today? Read in the hay? Now that's a good way to start a fire. All you have to do is doze off and whoosh. Any new books coming? I suggest Fire in the Belly, Taming Your Inner Dragon. It's a must for today's modern dragon. A book for sensitive dragons? Yes, I'd like to read it. Well, you can't. So lounge a lot, chopped it up and burned it. I've got another copy ordered. I need help finding a book. Do you have a title? Inventor, and I hope to be a knight by tomorrow. Well, that's fine and dandy, sweetie, but how about the title of a book? Um... You wouldn't happen to have great earthworms named Stanley throughout history? Here it is. It's one of our most popular titles. It exists? I mean, I changed my mind, but thanks. What can I do for you? I need help finding a book. Do you have a title? What about self-defense with belly button lint? Here it is, Mr. Doubting Thomas. Abridged or unabridged? But how? 
Wow! What can I do for you? I need help finding a book. Do you have a title? You you wouldn't have an illustrated guide to stomach flu volume 8. Keep your claws off my duster. Oh dear, here's volume 5 and 7, but it looks like Oh, oh, wait, here it is. But that's impossible. I'll forget it. I just remembered I already own the whole set. for you. I need help finding a book. Do you have a title? Crushing the will of the weak with no remorse. I'm certain we have a copy. You wait here while I check in back. Now there's something you don't see every day. Trivet's reading a book. Greetings, Trivet. What do you want, Flicker? I'm busy here. What are you doing? Changing my life. My days as a jester are over. Armed with this book, I plan to stand firm against the opulent bourgeois oppressors whose sole pleasure stems from making me sit on whoopee cushions. It's been months since you've done anything even remotely funny. All you do is sleep, eat and complain. This book, Hypnotism Made Easy, is going to change everything. We'll see how King High and Mighty Allfire likes making me laugh. Care for a demonstration? OK, but nothing too weird. I don't want to have flashbacks years from now. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be royalty for a day? Pampered like King Allfire or Princess Flame. Yes, what would it be like to be a princess? Now that would be interesting. Yes! Make me a princess! Oh, I've always wondered about you, Flicker. All right, now bear with me. Let's see, turning into barnyard animals, turning into pudding, turning into royalty. Here it is. Double, double, this is no trouble. Now you're a princess, although one with stubble. Hey, sweet cakes! Trivet, what are we doing in the library? Is there any word from Flicker yet? I don't believe it. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Flicker was right about you, Trivet. Now where is my father? <laughs> the last time I saw the king, he was in the square table room. You should go hop up on his lap. You do look ravishing today. <laughs> You're quite a little freak, Trivet. I'm leaving. Hello, Daddy. Busy doing kingly things. Flicker, what are you doing? Oh, Father, I've acted like such a fool lately. Can you ever forgive me? I don't care much for this behavior, Flicker. Stop! It's silly. And rather suspect. But, Daddy... That's enough. I mean it. Enough what, King Allfire? Enough for... Uh, Flicker? Who else would it be, sire? Are you feeling all right? You've been experimenting with your chemicals again, haven't you? I can tell. Be gone! Weirdo. It's one of Sir Blaze's many mirrors. Where could that book be? Blast you, Trivet! <laughs> yes, Your Highness, sir. It was so much fun. Let's try that hypnotism thing again. <laughs> Your wish is my command. Double, double, this is no trouble. Now you are a princess, although one with stubble. Where am I? Where's Daddy? Oh, I simply must talk to him about getting my own castle. Oh, what am 
I wearing? I can't be seen like this. I must have some proper clothing, or I'm not going anywhere. Hey, Princess Beauty. I don't think I've ever seen you look so radiant. Let's go talk to your daddy. Flicker, not now. Not while I'm a fashion tragedy. Sounds like flame, but looks like trivet. Nasty combination. I'd better take this along. The princess always likes to look her best. I might as well. They're not much of an heirloom anymore. Corny ghost costume. It's got all the clothing, shoes and accessories needed to dress a princess. Here, princess. Get some clothes on and then go and give your daddy a big smooch. Oh, thank you. You really know how to treat a lady. Now, don't be. Father, I understand you wish to speak with me. Oh, there you are, Flame. Go to your room. Oh, Father, is punishment your solution to everything? Do you intend to punish the world? I'll go to my room, but only because it's my choice. Good work, Flicker. You're free to go now. Finally, now I can go after that dodo bird and rescue the princess. I beg your pardon? Yes? What can I do for you? If you were me, where would you go? As you know, I'm not you, but if I were, I'd follow that dodo bird. I have all the information I need. Now to catch up with that dodo bird. I wouldn't give it a second glance. Lance the Mole is certainly busy today. This could be a big help in the right situation. My plans would have to be firmly planted though. Lance the Mole seems weary. It must be tough to have the weight of the world on your shoulders. I couldn't do that. Even I have my statue limitations. I'd rather not lug it around. It's like Rarian and Pure Flame's Feather Duster. I bet she's not too tickled that I took it. Hey! <laughs> what do you think you're doing, you crazy dragon? <laughs> oh yeah, you better stop with that right now! <laughs> 
Yeah, you want a crazy kid. Ha! Hello? Pizza chef? Hello? Hello? <laughs> I'm not talking now. I'm a busy laughing. <laughs> Dog the dog's bone. He probably misses it. Well, I pick up just about everything else. A bone should fit in nicely with the other half ton of junk I have. How can I follow the dodo to the kidnappers when some loon of a hunter has him trapped? The hunter probably set this to trap the dodo, but it looks like something else is caught in it. Ow, my aching foot. Hey, help me, somebody, please help me. That ant must have a weight problem if he sprung this trap. Or else he's just big boned. Whichever, he's really stuck. You bet I'm really stuck. Get me out of here. A bear trap, ready to ensnare fluffy little woodland creatures in its merciless steel jaws of death. How inconsiderate. I've got to find a way to keep the hunter from making jerky out of him. That's such a crime. He's determined to take that dodo home for supper. Excuse me, sir. I'm not leaving until I've bagged this here dodo, birds. Let me concentrate. I've got to stop him, or I'll never find out who kidnapped Princess Flame. It's a stamp the shape of an eagle. It's a stamp the shape of a dodo. Looks like there's plenty of ink still on it. It's official. Dodo birds are now a protected species. You were shooting an endangered species, see? Ordinance number 14602 clearly states that hunting dodo birds is against the law. Oh, it's rough, I tell you, rough. I didn't know. That must be a new law. Huh. I'm gonna throw the book at you. And my aim's better than yours. I'm wild, I tell you, wild. Thank you. 
I wonder where that dodo has wandered off to. Oh, there he goes. Two thumbs up, I left nothing. What uncouth, revolting peasants. I wonder what he's doing with that big flat bat. Excuse me. Not now, silly boy. I am trying to invent a game using bats and balls, but I can't figure out how to work in the possibility of a player strike. You're not too fond of Sir George, then? Acceptable! We poor townspeople commit absurdities at this snot dribbling collector of too many taxes. We are rankled with stinky boil anger at his outrageously expensive haircut. Are you going to burn that effigy? We are poor starving types who have no money for a lighter. You are a dragon animal. Come on, could you help us? Aren't you too scared to be talking to a dragon? We are mortified, but we have no energy to go running off in terror, waving our arms in the air and such. Now, help us burn this tyrant! Two thumbs up, I left nostrils to you, big shot! We display angry behavior! <laughs> burn, Sir George! Burn! We, we, we! Burn, 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 Sir George! Well, that's that then. Same time next week. Yeah, I can't make it. The Mud Eating Festival. Right, see you in two. It must have a will to live. It leapt free of the fire just in time. I can show this to everyone who said I'd never get ahead in life. It's the villager's paddle. With no effigy, they won't be needing it. I'm certain this has other uses besides paddling. That door leads into the only good dragon is a dead dragon juice pub. Hey, you in the dragon suit. Are you from Rotten Jimmy's employment agency? <laughs> uh, me? J uh, J Jimmy Rotten's? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, I told Jimmy I needed some costume help to walk the street and drum up business. <laughs> How much does the job pay? No, not much to start, but in three months, if you haven't been mortally wounded by an angry customer, I'll consider a raise. Are there benefits? Hmm. <laughs> For medical, there's a barrel of leeches in the back, and dental, there's a pair of pliers under the bar. <laughs> Are you the owner of this establishment? Sir Juicelot, at your service, formerly of Sir George's Royal Guard. <laughs> Why did you leave the Royal Guard? Well, Sir George claimed my insistent chattering was annoying, and if I didn't stop, he was going to stretch my tongue out, wrap it around my head, and spin me like a top. <laughs> so, what happened? But you never ask. After I stopped spinning, I left the guard and opened this place. The only good dragon is a dead dragon juice pub. <laughs> That's quite a name. I'd hate to see your bowling shirts. Tell me more about the pub. Okay, we serve every type of juice here. <gasps> We've got orange, apple, pear, nectarine, kiwi, grapefruit, tangerine, mango, carrot, guava, prune, peach, kumquat, and of course, carrot. You said carrot twice. I like carrot. Cut me and I bleed beta carotene. <laughs> What's so great about drinking juice? Are vu kidding? Look at moi. I'm so juiced up I can read in the dark, tell identical twins apart by the smell of their shoelaces, and hear a caterpillar scratching its armpits from 50 yards. <laughs> I'll accept the job. Well, get out and find some thirsty customers then. You wouldn't think someone so grammatically incorrect would spend time reading the funnies. Nah, talk is cheap. Go away, little man in silly costume, or I kill you. There you go, putting up walls around your emotions. Tell me what you really feel. When I look down deep inside my most private self... Yeah, I really want to kill you. Excellent. I feel we've made some real progress. How about a little stimulating conversation? How about brute stimulate your head with fist? Excuse me, brothers. I'm working on a wax disc recording invention. I think there might be a market for people who want to hear your chants. 
Today is the day for cleansing the soul, not for idle talk. Uh, excuse me again. Oh, very sorry, we can't break our lifelong vow of silence, you see. Ha <laughs> ha! Vow of silence? But we're talking right now and you've been ordering drinks all day. Ah, oh, yes, well, he worketh in mysterious ways, don't you think? I was wondering if you were thirsty and wanted to... Back off, lad. I am not thirsty. In fact, I have been so busy working, it has been a week since I've eaten. Four out of five dragons rated Salty Dick Soda Crackers the saltiest crackers in Camelhot. Would you like a cracker? What I would really like is a steaming bowl of dragon tail soup with big chunks of meat floating in it. Perhaps crackers might do. Oh, yummy! Mm -hmm. These are salty dick crackers, are they not? Just one bite and I find I am thirsty enough to drink an ocean. Things are really hopping now. We're starting to get a crowd. Help me out back here and take care of those monks. They love the prune juice special. <laughs> Excuse me, it's a juice a lot. I'm too busy to talk now. Help them monks, okay? Hello, how are you? Splendid. Oh, I can't thank you enough for dragging me in here. <laughs> get it? Dragon? Aren't you a bit overdressed? I was thinking the very same thing. With heavy clothing, it is difficult to do the most important thing in my new game. What? Swing at the ball? Slide into home? No, scratch yourself. I am thinking that the players will do much scratching and spitting as well. You could improve your bat design. I can't make it any flatter. It's hard enough to swing as it is. How about something rounded and tapered, with less wind resistance? Oh, I would be most interested in trying a bat such as that. I wouldn't waste my breath. Prunes. Nature's way of saying, run for your life! These must be the garnish for the prune juice drinks. Ooh, there were the holy order of the purple intestine! Now help them! Dragons won't eat prunes, but I'm sure I'll find someone who does. Bring it. How about a little stimulating conversation? How about brute stimulate your head with fist? Ooh, what do you think you're doing? Those are mine! What's the big deal? When I was baby brute, my sweet old granny read me funny papers when she was out on parole. Okay, I'll make it a point to stay one, no, two steps away from them. Two step? Why don't I just shuffle out of here? Hustle on out. Shuffle? Hustle? Those are dancing words. You want funny papers? Dance me for them on stage, girly dragon. Okay, silly man in a dragon suit, let us see if you can boogie with the big boys. Okay, I'm ready. Not bad for the easy peasy little beginning. Now for round two. You 
for one lucky cookie. Try to dance your way through this if you can. Lock up your daughters, because I am the new dance king. Prunes, the gift that keeps on giving. It's a startling likeness of Sir George. Each time I look at it, I get startled. Flat and wooden. Perfect traits if you're a pizza paddle. Bring us juice so our innards may flow freely. A big, flat, wooden paddle. The gameplay possibilities are endless. Ooh, there were the holy order of the purple intestine. Now help them. Surlounge a lot's private blend of laundry detergent. It's a great big pile of sh**! Huh? Bloody sensors. That was my best line in the whole game. Sir George's Castle. What a wretched place. Door duty today, answer the door, and then report for beheading! I'll get it myself! Oh. What's this? At last, the plans! I must show these to Mervyn. Enjoy your stroll, gate guard. Remove your helmet. Of course. But why? So this won't hurt me more than it hurts you! Very good, Sir George! So, Sir George is holding Flame captive. And now he has the plans to my dishwasher engine. The little guy's taking a real beating. If he keeps it up, he may become extinct after all. He doesn't seem himself. He might attack if I tried that. Sir George's moat. He really needs to call his pool guy. Not on your life. It's bad enough that it's filled with water, but there's an electric eel in there too. It's Sir George and Mervyn the Magician's home, Castle Grimm. The name certainly fits. It appears that water is drained from the moat to flush the toilet. It's the back door. Doesn't seem to be guarded. Those crazy humans. The drawbridge to Castle Grimm. That bell must summon the drawbridge guard. Not so fast! I see you there! Hey, you must be the new Pope boy from the Juice Pub! State your business! Is the Lady of the House in? Lady Esmeralda is rather indisposed. She and Sir George had words last night. Well, actually, she had words. He had a big rock. When do you expect her back? Well, that depends. Do you believe in reincarnation? Could you tell me about this moat? Sure! It circles the castle, it's filled with infectious rancid water, and it's home to a family of electric eels. Care for a death? I'd like to enter the castle, please. Unless your name is on the list, you're not getting in. And since there is no list, you're not getting in! 
Then why'd you even bother answering the bell? To accept deliveries. I'm sorry. I thought this was Stan and Trudy Dombrowski's castle. Theirs must be the next one over. Honest mistake. I might be able to use these to wrap up the mess I'm in. Prunes, the gift that keeps on giving. They're looking pretty good. I'd say almost presentable. Hmm, almost presentable, but it needs a finishing touch to pull it all together. A gift suitable for a king. After he eats the prunes, he can sit around reading the funny papers. State your business. Uh, I got a delivery for Sir George. Well, hand it over then. Now this is more like it. I'll run these right up to him. Sir George, a gift from one of your subjects. Let's see what we have here. I'll be very upset if this is another pile of horse. Mm, even better. Brooms. Mm, <laughs> mm, so good. Sir George, now slow down. Remember what happened last time. Oh no! Too late! Oh, blast! Out of my way! Ah! Sweet relief. Even out of water, this eel could chop the scales off me. I can't touch that eel without proper protection. These are ancient. They must be from the Tong Dynasty. The front door is an iron-bound oak with an armed guard. But the back door isn't even latched. Here be George's wife, same in death as was in life. The entrance to Sir George's royal bathroom. P you, no blue water in there. That doorway seems to lead into the courtyard. It's a castle window. Duh. Your Majesty, I thought you were still ensconced on the porcelain eminence. That is you, isn't it, Sir George? I hope you don't want your armour. We should wait until your stomach settles down. Uh, uh, no! I want my armour now! Does your Majesty remember it takes a fortnight to de-rust your armour every time you have one of your little accidents? Very well, let me feel your face. What? It's your own rule, sire. Last year, imposters stole your armor six times. So to verify that it's really you, I must touch your face. No! I touched myself earlier and I'm sure it's me! No touch, no armor. I am Sir George! I want my armor! Yes, well, let's have your face then. A dragon? Nice suit. Go back to the juice pub and tell Sir Juicelot to stop sending his help here. Fresh rainwater. Sir George must drink it since he certainly doesn't bathe with it. I always thought his face could break mirrors. The royal toilet appears occupied by Sir George. That's Sir George's armour, freshly de-rusted. Dressed in it, I could have free reign of the castle. The 
face rings a bell. Feels like it's done so repeatedly, too. But you don't smell like a polecat preschool. <gasps> An imposter! Beat it! Essence de Sir George. Smells just like the real thing. Wait, that smell would make a buzzard look up from a dead buffalo. It's you all right, Sir George. Now stay away from those prunes and take this rust be gone in case you have another accident and your armor seizes up on you again. It's heavy duty rust be gone. Sure to remove rust from almost anything. The eel is alright for the moment, but it'll need to be back in water soon. It's Dog the Dog, Sir George's pet peeve. Don't worry, boy! Today I'm nice. I once took a cat nap, but I'm no dog napper. They built a new black dragon and installed my dishwasher steam engine in it. Mervyn has used twisted science and a convenient household appliance to further the cause of evil. He must be stopped. It must be his job to launch the Black Dragon. You up there! Do something! And I mean now! But Sir George, only I may initiate launch procedure! You there! Sir George, are you here to give the word to launch the Black Dragon too? To what? I mean... Yes! Let's a rip! Yes sir, but first I need the passcode. Of course you do! I knew that! The rooster crows at midnight. There's sand in my swimming costume. The rains have come early this fall, so wear your good socks. Oh, I get it. <laughs> You're testing me. Gotcha, Chief. This control appears to raise or lower the front gate. This stairway goes down somewhere. I should probably investigate. Be long now, Princess Flame. Once your father's mystic royal scepter is in my hands, the universe will be mine. Mine! <laughs> You're wasting your breath, you megalomaniac. I make it a point never to listen to other people's psychotic episodes. Foolish creature. Once the Black Dragon 2 is fully operational, your value as a hostage diminishes to around... Uh, let's see, carry the four... Um... Zero! You will like it in the Psycho Ward. They have tapioca on Tuesday. I have to rescue the princess. She's locked up tight. 
Gets the gruesome grinning skull of Moondrake the Malevolent, forced into permanent retirement by Sir George. I always knew Mervyn had the brains of an idiot, and here they are. It's some sort of formula or secret code. Let's see. It says, poke eyes, bonk head, jab Adam's apple, poke eyes again, hammer nose, two head bonk, slap face, and then a final poke in the eyes. By criminy, it's some kind of barbaric code. That's Mervyn the Magician, Sir George's advisor. He's rumoured to have mildly magical powers. He's also a complete loon. I am shocked at such a frivolous use of science. You stick your left foot in, you stick your right foot out. Oh, another test, Joy. If I launch the Black Dragon now, he'll just roll on out the open door. There, the gate is securely closed. Right, you imbecile! I've got your code right here! Code has been verified! Launch! What the devil is all that racket? I get on a really good diabolical roll, and then what? Oh, I'd better investigate. How could you let this happen, you fool? Sir George entered the code correctly. I was only doing my job. What in the world possessed you to do such a thing? Really? What were you thinking? Hmm? Who says I was thinking? This is my castle, and I'll do as I please. It's locked. I'll need the keys. Princess Flame! Get away from me, you gangrenous brute! Flame! I must talk to you! You disgust me, Sir George! Go stick your head in a manure pile! Again? Psst! Princess Flame! Get away from me, you gangrenous brute! It's me! Flicker! I have no desire to play games, Sir George. If you were really Flicker, you'd know my birthday. You were born on December the 6th. You weighed 96 pounds and your first words were Flushy Mooga. Oh, your spies have done their homework, Sir George. But I vow to remain silent until I am rescued. I bet he's happy to be reunited with his bone. Whoa, good boy! Let's see if you can fetch that! What an ingenious little pup! He brought the keys to the cell! Is you, Flicker? You've gotten so forceful. Running away is so overrated. 
I'll race you home. Why is I live and breathe fire? It's Salangelot. Oh, be still, my heart. Flame, it is I, Sir Lounge-a-Lot. What's on your mind, you hunky, well-proportioned slab of dragon? You're what's on my mind. Regardless of your feelings for me, I will have you. Oh, talk is cheap, scabbard breath. Let's see some action. Your wish is my command, my saucy little tart. Ouch, but I didn't know you cared. No! Where could she be? I sent my knights out hours ago to find her. Flicker, there you are, you... you... Where is Flame? Hi, Daddy. Flame? Oh, thank goodness you're safe. I was so worried about you. King Allfire, this was entirely my fault. I have no problem in believing that. But before I deal with you, I need you to go out and bring back my knights. Understand, dish boy? Flame, go to your room. Oh, Father, is punishment your solution to everything? Do you intend to punish the world? I'll go to my room, but only because it's my choice. I beg your pardon? Yes, what can I do for you? I must find those knights. Try checking your map. Did you not off for a while? Can I have some useless information? 70% of those slimy humans' bodies is made of water. Now if only the other 30% were made of soap. Can I have some useless information? Strange, but true. Every six minutes a mother dragon gives birth. I say we find that dragon and stop her. I have all the information I need. Now to bring back the King's Knights. The only way for that little guy to get free is to chew his leg off. Ooh, that would sting. He's certainly one trapped ant. Stop reminding me. How about getting me out of here, huh? Ah, uh, it's rusted shut. Oh, call your daddy and get a lawyer, okay? I don't have a daddy. This should do the job. Hey pal, thanks a lot. Wait till the guys back at the mound hear about this. Hey, if I can ever help you out of a jam, give me a call. Or better yet, blow this whistle and my friends and I'll come running. Or maybe strutting, I'm not sure. He's busy administering justice. I just hunt for food to survive. All right, then hunt yourself something legal and meaty, okay? Careful, officer. That could easily be you. doesn't seem to want to go back to work. 
Nah, talk is cheap. This dirt is well packed. That sign should stay where it is for some time, barring some act of nature. Lance the Mole seems weary. It must be tough to have the weight of the world on your shoulders. Thanks. That'll make the job a lot easier once I'm off break. Just hold on one minute. You'd better have requisition form 8HB33 slash VMD30 for that. What if I don't have that form? Well, if that were true, we'd have to fill out report H999V, make two copies, attach one to voucher B8553 slash 4, and process it with routing slip GBB412. And then the real paperwork would start. Excuse me, but are you still on break? You bet your toolbox I am. I'm using up some break time from when I was homesick with a flaming flu last month. Just hold on one minute. You'd better have requisition form 8HB33 slash VMD30 for that. Can't I just borrow them? Even if I wanted to, I couldn't let you touch them until you took the five-week training course, had at least three certified instructors sign approval form HH332 slash 3888, and you got signed up for stilt insurance. Sorry. Just hold on one minute. Uh, Eddie Ember from Local 47 sent me. Eddie Ember? Eddie got me into the union? I'd give him a lung if he needed it. You want these stilts? Take them. I don't need them anymore. Not with the sign dropping down. The Royal Gardens of Camelhot. Planted with corn, in honour of the king's feet. And let those big black birds peck my hand, quoth Flicker nevermore. Those are tough crows. They scared the last scarecrow right out of town. Boo! A corny ghost costume. This should fix those crows. That's better. Now this garden can grow. It's my scarecrow. Now if only I had a lion and a tin man, we'd have enough for a game of bridge. I better leave it here to keep those crows away. I'm sure some use for this corn will pop up. humans were building a trap. All four knights are stuck inside. Brave knights, are you well? We're just peachy. Thank you for asking. I'll search for a way to stop this crazy thing. No! Sir George's men trapped us here to raid the mines of Camelhot. They must be stopped. But Sir Loungelot, no arguments! Stop Sir George's men from raiding the mines! This invention could be a big help for cleaning up after parades and festivals. The spinning fan blades provide plenty of thrust to blow away litter and dust. I've got to be careful. Too much rotary power will make this thing airborne, tossing the driver out. Pedalling provides locomotion and powers the fan blades. I think this just might work. 
but I'm going to need four paddles, one for each night. I need two more. I have to stop the humans from invading the royal mines. After working for Sir George, stealing coal from fire-breathing, heavily-armed dragons is easy. Can you believe those dragons eat jewels? This chemical dust is a byproduct of diamond mining. Whenever we sweep it out of the mines, it seems to rain. They're only after coal now, but they'll be after gems soon. I have to stop them. This canary must have been trained by Sir George personally to warn against poison gas leaks. No one can leak it like him. Hello, little fellow. Mm. Hello yourself. Did I wake you up? It's not you. I didn't get much sleep last night. How's the gas situation? I take it you mean here in the mine? Everything's fine. Although every once in a while I act like I'm in a faint just to throw a scare into these guys. A little job security? A bird's gotta eat. Who do you work for? Sir George, but not directly. I subcontract. I heard he doesn't pay well. I manage to take care of the bells. Why don't you grab some shut-eye? I'll cover for you. I need some time to think about it. I am a bird brain, you know. I'll leave you to your work. It contains King Allfire's coronation speech. Half the subjects who heard it are still sleepy. How about a magazine to keep you occupied? <sighs> no, that's a splendid idea. Would you mind holding it open for me? It would be my pleasure. Uh, let's see here. Mm, a speech. My dearest loyal subjects, blah, 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 it's truly an honor, yawn, blah, 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 and then when I turn five, yawn, blah, blah. No, let the little guy sleep. We dragons need these gems for food. I must protect them. These canisters seem to seal up fairly tight. It's a pickaxe. I can pick and choose with this. No questions asked. It's a vein of coal. No more for me, thanks. My head is still spinning from the piece I ate earlier. Let's get to the bottom of this. Down on floor. Heel pivot, tall pivot. This is how we dance. Dig it. Here's the power source for the trap. And that fellow's face rings a bell. Excuse me, but don't I know you? You embarrassed me already today. We have met. Where was it again? You beat me in dance contest, Iguana. Just can't put my finger on where we've met. You dethroned me as dance king. The only thing that gave life meaning. Touchy. Ruin someone's life just once and they never let you forget it. Not you again. What are you doing? You ruin everything! Mm, it's, it's jammed in too tight. Ah! 
dumb dragon, you make me angry! Well, I've got what I need, and speaking to you as a friend, you've really got to work on your attitude problem. I'm sure I could have a ball with this. They're my most devoted customers. Keep their glasses full. Oh my goodness. <gasps> That's it. The perfect bat. I should be able to smash the ball a mile. Here, take my old one. Mmm, flat and wooden. My inventor's sense is tingling. I regret that I cannot turn water into prune juice. The magical home of the Lady of the Lake. Look, something magical's happening. Oh, what are the chances? Oh, all this rubbish everywhere! What a lady to do! I got you now, fish lady! Speedy, quick! Uh, let me go! Root. Oh no! That fisherman just caught the lady of the lake! By the evils of George, I think that fisherman has captured the lady of the lake! That fisherman looks about as dim as a half-watt candle. Hey! You in the ugly suit! Leave those fish alone! Ha! Uh, never eaten a big girly fish before! Hey! You in the ugly suit! Mm, uh, I got me a mermaid! Yeah ha ha! Hey! Uh, haddock sandwiches is good bait! Hey! Ooh, must obliterate all strange fishes! The eel is alright for the moment, but it'll need to be back in water soon. That fisherman's got no regard for his natural surroundings. This ought to enlighten him a bit. Flicker, is there any way I can thank you? Yeah, I got an idea. You could dribble melted sapphire sauce on my... Whoa, wait a minute! I'm promised a Princess Flame! <laughs> After me, you'd forget all about that little princess. Okay... Wait, 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 stop! Actually, what do you know about the Cave of Dilemma? Great parties ever since we banned the trolls. Actually, I'm kind of the bouncer, since I control the waterfall that opens it. I thought it was a place where squires are tested for knighthood. Only on weekdays, to pay the rent. Well, I need to get up there. I'm trying to become a knight. Ah, oh, let me see. Got any powdered unicorns horn on you? I left it at home. Silly me. Oh, that plan's no good then. Hmm. Oh, I could turn you into a nymph. Then you could dance up the waterfall. Of course, you'd have to remain that way for a millennium. Hmm, seems like a pretty steep downside. Well, I guess I could just shut it off and you could take the stairs. A bit boring, if you ask me. At this point, I'll take boring. Oh, as you wish. Go to the falls on the morning of the tournament and it will be... Oh. 
You could make me a knight right here and now. Oh, baby, baby, baby. The best things in life are long and hard. I knew you were going to say something like that. My job's done here. Plus, it's getting kind of warm. Water. The stuff of life. I can't stand the stuff. Presenting Flicker and the stupendous stilt walk of certain suicide. Coming soon to a medieval tournament near you. The sword insipid. Whosoever lifteth the sword from this king's heir 680 clothes dryer shall rightly be crowned master of all. Or maybe not. All the sword's enchantment appears to have gone directly into the dryer. Well, so much for that master of all myth. It's set on high. That much heat could damage or burn anything inside. Now it's set on delicate. Friends, dragons, countrymen, lend me your ears! And this invention will turn them into some darn good popcorn. You start with an ear of fresh corn, which you have to dry until the kernels are hard. Dried corn kernels are packed into an airtight container. It has to be metal to evenly distribute the heat. Toss the popper into a fire or near anything that's really hot. And a few minutes later, look out. A large enough popper could blow out the fire or worse. So be careful. Now it's on delicate heat, the gentlest of all the settings. Perfectly dried popping corn. It's perfectly dried popping corn from the dryer. The black dragon gets his fuel in these canisters. Eureka! Crikey! It's the mother load! A rich vein of ore! It's designed to push a boat through water. Page 76 of the script tells me I can use it to propel something else. Flat and wooden. Perfect traits if you're a pizza paddle. Flat and wooden, my inventor's sense is tingling. A big flat wooden paddle. The gameplay possibilities are endless. Now I can put my plan into action. So knights, hold these paddles straight out and tilt them a bit to catch the wind. Flicker, you dastardly young cullion. Hmm? 
Oh no! Wait, we forgot about the princess! The princess is safe. King Allfire sent me for you. To Camelot, knights! Perhaps King Allfire will forgive me now. Well done, Flicker. It appears that you are starting to take responsibility and clean up after yourself. As you know, loyal knights, tomorrow is the tournament. The victor will be your new king and will wed my daughter. I suggest you retire for the evening. But Sire, what if Sir George shows up with another black dragon? Ha! Not unless he knows karate, Flicker, you little sissy. Father, I beg you to reconsider and let Flicker participate in the tournament. Dear, the only hope for Flicker is if he can earn his knighthood by tournament time. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh now, lizard boys. Oh, I've overslept on tournament day. I hope the Lady of the Lake turned off the waterfall for me. I need to get up to the Cave of Dilemma to become a knight. This chemical dust is a byproduct of diamond mining. Whenever we sweep it out of the mines, it seems to rain. I'm not a chemist, but I think I can use this. The sign says, Cave of Dilemma this way. You must be at least this tall and a squire to pass. Pregnant dragons, individuals with a history of heart disease or urinary tract infections are advised not to enter. We don't want to deal with you. Try Magical Merv's Mystical Mud Hole instead. Okay, it seems safe enough. No puddles or anything. The Cave of Dilemma is closed, so go away! Scram, take a hike, I'm retired! I can't believe this. After all I went through to get up here. Wait a minute, how long have you been retired? What time is it? <laughs> but seriously, what's the matter? I have to become a knight. Let me guess, a giant troll has invaded your castle and all the regular knights are off at a swordplay seminar. Oh, no, no. The king's evil twin brother has taken over the castle? <gasps> a twisted gnome has made everyone in your kingdom speak Esperanto. <laughs> I've got it. I'll bet you're in love. That's it. Princess Flame's honor is at stake. I have to become a knight. Will you help? Ah, problem number 449. No problem. I have the rest of my life to start my retirement. Tell me a bit more about those challenges. We've got the test of dexterity, the test of strength, the test of eye-hand coordination, and the test of something a wee bit scary. Which one do you want to know about? Tell me about the test of dexterity. The outcome of this challenge is up in the air. No dragon has ever returned successfully from this trial. Well, there was one, but it was a really close shave. What about the strength test? It's pretty simple. If you can't get the job done with your back, do it with what you've got between your ears. What about the eye-hand coordination test? For this challenge, you must pull a rabbit out of bunny-hopping hats. 
Don't sweat it if you can't keep your eyes on them every single second. The rabbits have to rest, you have to rest, just be sure you do it at the same time. The test of something a wee bit scary? I don't get it. Well, it used to be called the test of ultimate terror. But Sir Cravenhard, the hesitant, complained to the Fair Challenge Bureau, so I had to tone it down. Now, through semi-mystical means, I pick through your mind and locate whatever you dread the most. Then I bring that thing to life and annoy the heck out of you with it. Okay, I'm ready to give it a go. Okay, there's the test of dexterity, the test of strength, the test of eye-hand coordination, and finally the test of something a wee bit scary. Pick one, kid. Pick one! How about the test of dexterity? Okay, this one is simple. Get all three porcupines spinning at the same time to win. I hope these porcupines are well paid for this job. Lucky for Rapunzel, she didn't hurt herself with these. This seems to be doing the job. Plus, they seem to like it. Nice one, kid. Of course, we're gonna have to send those guys south for the winter now. Who are you? I'm guardian, gatekeeper, and janitor of the Cave of Dilemma. I bought the place from Mystic Mel three millennia ago. The name's Ancient Al. Ancient Al? That must have been a rough name to grow up with. You're a funny little schmickle, aren't you? Yay! I'm ready for another challenge. That's a good start, you little schmizzle. Pick one, kid. Pick one! I'll choose the test of strength. Okay, just a bit of heavy lifting. See that rock? Rock? That's not a rock. It's a landmass. It's a challenge, you little snuggy. If it was easy, we'd be up to our armpits in nights. Just move the rock a few feet over that way. A few feet? Is that all? I suppose you'd like me to juggle it as well. I'm gonna have to find a way to move it. I certainly can't chip it or crack it. Blow this whistle and my friends and I'll come running. Or maybe strutting, I'm not sure. On three, one, two, three, heave. Way to go! Who knew those little buggers were that strong? All those years I stepped on them, they could have killed me! Yay! I'm ready for another challenge. That's a good start, you little schmizzle. Pick one, kid. Pick one! Let's try the test of eye-hand coordination. There's a bunny rabbit in each hat. One is healthy, and the other three have rabies, and they love to bite. Keep your eye on the healthy rabbit as they jump around, and be sure to pick that hat. Got it? And what if I pick the wrong one? Don't be a baby. Our little rabies never killed. Um, just follow the healthy one. Concentrate, Flicker. Away we go!
like a hat flicker. Don't be shy. I'm proud of you, kid. And I'll have you know that not a single rabbit was harmed during this challenge. Yay! I'm ready for another challenge. Come on now, kid. Now it's time to face something a wee bit scary. Do it for your old Uncle Ancient Al. Oh well. I suppose it's time for the test of something a wee bit scary. What in the world is that? It looks like all the old dirty laundry beneath my bed. So I hate doing laundry. Is that a crime? Does that make me evil? Wicked? Acknowledging your fears is the first step to facing them, lad. You must conquer the diabolical laundry beast in order to pass this challenge. This creature is composed of all my old laundry. I'm so ashamed. It's a lounge lot's private blend of laundry detergent. Wow! It doesn't seem to mind soap at all. It's ammonium nitrate powder. I saw a pile of this get caught in an updraft and cause a downpour. Ha! Die, you banshee of a thousand wash cycles! I've taken care of you for good. Nice work, kid. If you hadn't held the starch, you'd be in for a rematch. You've passed the test! When you first walked in here, I didn't think you had what it takes. So that means I'm a knight? Not yet, you little schnutzy. Your reward for passing the almost impossible challenges of the Cave of Dilemma is this cubic zirconia. You can redeem this for a knighthood in any kingdom in the world. Thanks for your help, Ancient Al. You got what you came for, so go. If you get a chance, drop me a line. I'd like to know how things turn out. He won't write. They never do. <sighs> That's my ticket to entering the tournament. All I have to do is give it to King Allfire. I hope there's still time to compete in the tournament. Flicker, come over here. By George, by Dragon, you've done it, haven't you? <laughs> Hand over the cubic zirconia. Night as you become as that is all as. Ouch! This has been one exciting tournament! Joining me in the booth is my special guest, Jacques Strap! What are your thoughts so far, Jacques? Well, uh, well you know, for the, uh, we're going to, uh, down for you. I couldn't have said it better, champ! Sir Flicker of Camelhot, newly knighted just this very morning, has emerged as a Dark Horse favorite! Well, you, uh, move for, uh, the moment? No thanks, Jacques, just had a cap! Now, young Sir Flicker goes head-to-head -head against veteran Sir Gasflame in the vicious log-rolling competition! Ooh. 
Oh, you know, do, uh, move, uh, for more. An astute observation, champ. With that victory, young Sir Flicker shall meet Sir Loungelot in a contest of cunning, strength, and courage. I am speaking, of course, of the very butch and dragonly sport of thumb wrestling. Illegal grip, you all sort no fair! You won? You won! And I have to admit that I am surprised at the outcome of this tournament. It was never in doubt, sire. I have the most cunning thumbs in all of Camelhot. But I was supposed to be the winner! I'm supposed to marry Flame! I am here to be crowned the true king of Camelhot! Too late, foul brute. The tournament is over. Your time is past, King Smallfire. Loyal knights, defeat this monstrosity. Wow, what an entrance. The Black Dragon almost cleared out the entire arena. Evil dragon! Popped him in a jiffy! Oh, I'd better get back to the tournament to see how everyone is doing. You dimwit! You wrecked another black dragon! That's it! I quit! Oh, quit your whining! And build me a black dragon three, magician. Oh, yeah. I'll make you a black dragon, all right. Consider this my resignation! Whoa! That was a mistake. Give me back my scepter! Oh, your wish is my command, mighty Mervyn. Join your scepter! I am the Infernal Incarnate! Nobody will stand between me and legal and binding ownership of this kingdom. I order you to leave Camelhot this instant! You order me? You're not fit to order me lunch! Say, there's an idea. Lunch. <laughs> I think I'll start with a shrimp! What a jerk! You ate the king! You can't eat the king! And a little cream puff for dessert. Now, to survey my new land before I scorch it black! It's not fair! I go to all the trouble of creating the ultimate weapon, and the ungrateful contraption eats me! The Black Dragon is draining mystical energy from the jewel. I doubt it would be able to fly without it. Mervyn's as stuck as the King and I. Etc, etc, etc. What do you think of the decor inside your new dragon, Mervyn? Me? I think the slime's just a lovely shade of puce. Very funny, foolish dragon. This will be no more than a minor setback once I get my hands on that scepter. It's an indicator of how much energy the black dragon is draining from the mystic jewel. As if that annoying clicking sound didn't make it clear enough. 
King Allfire is just as stuck as I am, and he appears to be in a bit of a stupor. Not too fast, or it'll blow! Hey, Mirth, let's say we bury the hatchet and work together. Hmm, not a bad idea. Once I free myself, I'll get back to you on that hatchet thing. Fiddle with your joystick as much as you want, Dragon! I have one of my own! It's my clicker. The first thing I ever invented. I won second place at the science fair that year. First place went to the wheel. Hey, it sounds like the engine. Sort of. Are you playing with that lever again? Stop it! You'll go blind! It's pointless for you to speed it up. I can simply slow it down. I don't understand! How could it stall? Oh, that's just marvelous, Lizard Boy. The path to freedom lies ahead. Only something unpredictable and very heavy can stop me now. You ungrateful, bloated cretin! I made you! You are where you are today, thanks to me! Then thanks for putting me up a tree, you cross-dressing pillock! <laughs> what a stroke of luck, sire! Landing on top of the Royal Mattress Factory like we did! Oh, I haven't felt this young in years. I think I have another 500 years of ruling in me. <laughs> Let me ask you, Flicker. If you didn't really want to run the kingdom, why did you enter the tournament? Well, sire, apart from the usual reasons of macho bravado and general stupidity, it was to save Princess Flame from having to marry against her will. I see. Flicker, your actions over these past few days have shown you to be a lad of noble character with a brave streak bordering on the suicidal. <laughs> I think you would be the perfect suitor for my flame. Is that all I had to do to impress you? I would have done that years ago. It sure seems a long way back to the castle. Yes, I don't remember it being this far. Seems like we're standing on a treadmill. I think I figured it out, Flicker. We're on a shortcut. A shortcut? Quite. I bet the designers took a shortcut by looping this road in 20 frames. That explains it. Can you believe the audacity of those guys? Murray, it's me. Hold the phone real close, pal. I've got something real personal to tell you. You're fired! You stink! You're not an agent, you're a curse! <laughs> I'll tell you what's the matter. It's this gig you got me. The one with the dragons and knights and crap. It's a dog, Murray. And this business with the computers and the interactive games is not the wave of the future, Buck Rogers. It's the wave that washes dead fish up on shore. It stinks worse than you do, and it's never going to catch on. All you do is walk around picking up enough stuff to fill a shopping cart. Oh, and get this, the bag they give you to put it all in is tiny. I mean, there you are, hefting around half a ton of useless crud that you probably couldn't lift with a damn crane. Suspend your disbelief if you will, folks. You break your back to find some toenail clippings that you're going to have to use later on with some belly button lint to make an atom bomb. 
Yeah. Oh, and get this. If there's some kind of problem that the programmers can't be bothered to deal with, they just say it has magical properties and move on to the next scene. Who writes this stuff, for Pete's sake? Oh, and then they go and cut half my lines to give more screen time to that flicker kid who, just between you and me, is lousy. <laughs> I don't care, Murray! Now, why don't you start earning that 20% you're stealing from me and get me some TV work? Here's an idea. Team me up with some young lookers and we can go solve crimes. Trivets are angels or something. Look, I've got to go before these spuds start working on a sequel. Huh? I don't care if my contract says I have to. Oh, I just won't show. What are they going to do, sue me? Oh, yeah, good point. So I'll be in the next one. But only if they get someone who at least graduated from high school to do the graphics. You work on it. OK, baby, I'm out of here. If you want me, I'll be at Two Bunch getting a soak in the mud. All right, love to you too. <laughs>